Welcome to the Managing Drought in the Southern Plains webinar series. This is a drought update brought to you by the Southern Climate Impacts Planning Program in association with NOAA, the National Integrated Drought Information System, and the National Drought Mitigation Center. We provide these uh, periodic uh, webinars on the drought conditions and, and uh, regular updates on uh, drought as it evolves across our region. Uh, we're making a few changes as uh, the drought has not really been changing too much re recently in our region. So we're going to go to uh, monthly uh, updates rather than weekly updates during the uh, winter here. So um, since everything's kind of settled down for a little bit, look for these on the first of each month. So why does drought change more slowly in the winter? Well, the answer is a long word of apotranspiration. Basically, the plants aren't taking up the water, so the soil's recharging, lakes are recharging, things generally tend to improve a little bit in the winter, but uh, the drought evolution is a lot slower. So uh, look for the next one, uh, update around December 1st. So here's what's been happening recently. We've seen gradual improvement continuing across the southern plains and the surrounded, surrounding areas over the last month or so. There are still some uh, stubborn spots of D3 to D4 that are hanging on in places, and we have lingering impacts. We've seen especially along the lower Colorado River, there's been a lot of uh, rain recently in parts of Texas, but it has not hit the upstream watershed. So there's uh, low, low river levels, low uh, reservoir levels that are still plaguing the water system in Texas there. In the last couple of uh, months, we've seen it getting drier along the eastern U.S., potential drought developing in there. And uh, in the next few weeks, we see more rain and drought improvement expected, especially east of I-35 from central Texas, central Oklahoma, on eastward. So the pattern this this week looks uh, pretty much as uh, this, this continuing slight improvement. Uh, there's areas of D2 hanging on across from western Nebraska down through the Oklahoma Panhandle and into the Texas Panhandle. Uh, some little spots of D3, D4 drought that are still remaining in places. Uh, New Mexico a lot better since uh, the beginning of the summer, we'll see. But there's a large area of, of the severe drought, D2, and extreme drought in, in uh, California, Nevada, and into southern Oregon or southeastern Oregon and southern Idaho and then a little bit of development along the east coast you can see up in Massachusetts has some drought areas now and some abnormally dry areas along uh, other parts of the Atlantic. Here in our uh, region we can see those spots of D3 and D4 hanging in southeast Colorado and western Nebraska parts of Kansas through the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. The area around Wichita Falls, Texas, is and into southwestern Oklahoma is probably the largest and, and most severe of these spots right now. So we've seen uh, now 78% of the high plains is drought-free uh, compared to where they were coming off from a year ago. Uh, it was pretty much a flip of that where um, there was severe and extreme drought across the most of the, the high plains. Uh, we just have those pockets of exceptional drought and lingering impacts in the south. The west has seen some improvement, but there's still more than half the area of the west is still in some level of drought. Here's a close look at the three states uh, within the uh, area right around here, and we see that since July, we've seen drastic improvement in uh, total area of drought as well as the extreme and exceptional drought, whereas back at the uh, beginning of summer, we saw a, a third of Texas, 26% of Oklahoma and 93% of New Mexico in extreme or exceptional drought, those two highest categories. All of those states are now down to, to 3 to 4% in extreme or to exceptional drought, and uh, most of those have even reduced to, to, um, to uh, some areas that are drought-free. When we look at the last uh, 14 days to 60 days, you can see that dryness emerging along the East Coast, and you can see that uh, lingering dryness out in California and Nevada. You can also see a very wet pattern from the northern plains, northern Rocky Mountains, as well as uh, from Texas kind of going uh, eastward. And coupling that with the longer term period, that northern plains wetness really shows up. That uh, California, Nevada area uh, kind of core of dryness shows up as a year to date. And uh, there's still some rain from a very wet beginning of the year along the east coast that has uh, helped stave off some of these, these shorter term impacts right now. Looking ahead to the next few days, it looks like there's another storm system coming through Oklahoma and North Texas that's expected to bring some heavy rain um, over uh, later in the weekend and early next week, and um, that's going to uh, kind of continue some of this improvement, that area east of I-35 mentioned. Temperatures should be pretty much uh, about on par for this time of year. Uh, there's really no uh, 
areas of enhanced warmth or, or coldness indicated over the next uh, several days. When we look out to 8 to 14 days, it looks like it's a pretty clear signal for getting a little bit colder out in the western United States, uh, warmth hanging on in the southeast, and uh, uh, maybe a drier pattern emerging after we get through this next week of storm systems across the southern plains. Uh, Three-month outlook looking here in November, December, January, so the uh, core part, uh, so we're getting to the core part of winter. This out update was issued October 17th from the Climate Prediction Center, calling for uh, basically warm conditions for uh, through the first part of the winter at least, and uh, fairly dry conditions continuing across Texas and into, into New Mexico a little bit, uh, and a little bit of uh, above normal rainfall, or snowfall in that case, up into Montana and, and across the northern Rockies. When we uh, looking at the next month here, this is the monthly drought outlook. The Climate Prediction Center website also has seasonal drought outlooks that look at a three-month period. But the monthly outlook, uh, monthly outlook shows those improvements across eastern Texas and Louisiana, Arkansas, as well as on up in Missouri, parts of Iowa, and Illinois. There's also a slight area of development indicated along the Georgia-South Carolina coast and continued dryness as we get into New England and of course much of the West remaining in drought. So please uh, monitor our website or uh, sign up for these updates and, and we'll let you know when new, new drought uh, briefings or webinars are posted. Please remember that there is a uh, drought webinar being held by the National Drought Mitigation Center on November 6th, so please go to the uh, their website drought.unl.edu for more information on that. And um, we hope to uh, see you again here pre pretty soon. Have a great weekend.